and I am telling you like it is, and this is unbelievable. I cannot believe I'm sitting by this amazing writer and woman. I am finding out more information as we're sitting here. Um, but Dandy Daly Mackle, I'm holding your books here, and I have to ask you, what inspired you to be a writer? I think I was born wanting to write, and my family, that luckily both parents were wonderful storytellers and had a lot to talk about. They had met in World War II in a training camp. They were Army doctor and Army nurse, and they both went overseas after they got married after three weeks. And so I love the war stories. They went to different fronts, and they just wrote each other all the time. But they had amazing experiences. And growing up, they did too. And so story was always there, and I just kind of thought that was cool. <laughs> well, I think it's amazing, and I've, I've got to ask you this question yes. because when I read it, I couldn't believe it, and it's so amazing. I mean, God has truly given you a gift, you know. I just feel like he is downloading things. How many books have you written? <laughs> I've probably written a 1,000, but I've had about 500 of them accepted for publication and come out as actual books. That is unbelievable. <laughs> and so, you know, somebody like myself and maybe some of you that are looking in and, and, and tuning in today, maybe you've thought about writing a book. Can you go back to your first book I and can. just tell me, um, you know, did it take you long to get yeah. that first one going? Yeah, I was a missionary behind the Iron Curtain right after college, and it was pretty scary and cold, and I lived in a house with 20 poles and checks, and after dinner, I'd have to run up and cover myself in a down comforter that they made for me <laughs> out of chicken feathers, but anyway, so there. after I read every book I could get my hands on, I started writing that book. I just felt like everybody has one good book in them. And so I wrote my one good book while I was there and in longhand. And it was, you know, what do you do when God says no? Like when things don't go the way you want them to go. And I thought that was maybe it, <laughs> except that I had a bunch of other ideas. Oh so. <laughs> my goodness. So let me, I'm going to ask you just yes. about your encounter with God. Yeah. Um, because Good. just hearing where you were at that point and what was going on in your life, when did you come to know the Lord? Not until I was in college. Oh, okay. And I grew up in a little town where we had three churches, and the one that I went to was a mixture of everybody who wasn't a brand, <laughs> you know, in that town. So our pastor had to be very general. And that, you know, it was pretty much just be good. And it wasn't until I got to college that I understood grace. And I went for it wholeheartedly and needed it. And then I bought a Bible, just a New Testament, and I started reading it. And I was one of those brand new Christians who would run up to old Christians and tell them a story they've heard a million times. Like, did you know that Lazarus, came back from being dead, that Jesus did that. You were excited about the Word of God. Yeah, it was awesome. And so that's where I became a believer. And then by the time I graduated from college, um, I had a scholar, I was majoring in foreign languages, in fact, wow. who, you know, God knew before I did. And uh, I was headed toward Stanford to get a PhD and, and I met someone who lived behind the Iron Curtain. They needed someone not affiliated. And I said, sure, I'll go, and so I did. Well, anyway. you know, sometimes being available to God, That's He will it. open doors and yeah. put you in places. Right. And I'm sure all of that helped in your writing, and, oh, and yeah. um, I, I can't mm -hmm. wait. Well. In my hands, I have something that's close to my heart um, because I, you know, I grew up, you know, reading and not being able to always find fun Christian books for kids. Right. Um, I am a mom and I have four kids. We have three children. We adopted one and, you know, trying to find, you know, they would tell us, you know, you got to do 20 minutes of reading a day. And I would think, well, what can I get that my kids would, it would capture their attention. And I'm looking at this and I'm going to tell you, I love the color, cover. Um, and the book is called Winnie the House. I'm um, sorry, the horse gentler yep. and of course if you remember black stallion and all of that 
Um, so I want to know all about this and yeah. tell us a little bit about this book. Well, Winnie the Horse Gentler is an eight book series. And okay. so this is the first one called Wild Thing. And uh, it's just, it's a teen who is amazing and can gentle horses like her mother who's no longer with them. And she's so good with horses, not so much with her peers, like at school, other kids. And they're, they're it's just real horse stuff because I grew up on horses. We always, always had a horse, not a fancy horse, <laughs> never a fancy horse. And we rode bareback because we couldn't afford saddles. And um, But you just learn about horses and how to gentle them instead of break them like a lot of people used to do. And so Winnie is like that, and it's mm -hmm. loaded with horse tips, but she learns to trust God and, you know, in her halting steps and learns loyalty from horses and forgiveness. They always forgive you no matter what you do. And, and then that helps her faith deepen with God as she's forgiven. And so it's the um, not in your face Christian message, but the whole thing is in there and in the series. And so I get letters from lots of kids who don't even notice, you know, wow. and yet they've heard the message of Christ and some that come to Christ that way. And so that's been a, that's been a fun series. And then right now I'm writing a prequel wow. and Tyndale House is coming out with a barn that has all oh, I love eight that. titles in there. And then, you know, we've since done a Backyard horses, which is what we called ours, because you couldn't, have, nobody could afford to put them in a stable. So we kept them in our backyards, or if you didn't have a farm and a pasture, and uh, so we'd have backyard horses that's a little younger age than Winnie and Starlight Animal Rescue, and that's an older one. So we're pretty. I, I love this. You know, growing <laughs> up, actually, we had horses for a little while. Yeah. And believe it or not, we had the whole bareback thing. I don't know about getting on a horse today, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I loved it growing up. And mm -hmm. my sister actually was really great. She took lessons and, and she was into that. But you know what? I am just sitting here thinking about this. And I love to get together with my daughter when she was younger and some of her friends. And one day we did this cooking class. But I'm thinking, what if we did a reading group and if you're a mom out there and you're going you know how can i share the gospel um and let their you know my daughter's friends know that god loves them too you know i'll tell you a great idea what if you got a group of friends together and did a reading book you know buy a book for every one of those little girls get them to come over your house once a week somebody did that for my daughter and That's they great. called it i think wow girls ah. um but i think this would be a lot of fun you know doing something okay. like that we have another book here and I shared yes. with you, you know, yeah. that my daughter had gone through mm -hmm. some bullying. Mm -hmm. As a mom, it was very hard for me because I'm so involved in ministry and our women's ministry and so many great things. And I felt really bad because I missed that. Mm -hmm. And then I was faced with it. And it was like, how do you help her heal? And I'm so grateful to the Lord that today she's healed and uses that mm -hmm. as part of her testimony. But you wrote this book based on bullying right and it's called larger than life Lara right yeah tell us about this one okay this is a this was a direct God gift honestly um, we have a special need daughter and she's been bullied and so I uh, but she's not like the character in here she's not large like the main character is but she has that heart and what's most significant about the Lara in the book is that she has this smile that's authentic and doesn't go away. And when kids are mean to her, she returns kindness for meanness and she ends up transforming that whole school. And then something happens where she takes the blame for all of mm -hmm. these kids who have been mean for her and they get it, they, that she has taken the blame for them and they're transformed so it's been interesting to see that it's very big in public schools too because it teaches how to write everything i know about writing is in that book the chapters are character and rising action falling action climax the parts of story and so it's been used to teach in a lot of even by university professors as well as in elementary and middle schools and um, because the action takes place while the teacher is teaching them a certain part of story. That's what's going on. The climax is at the climax. And um, 
anyway, so she changes that entire school and it's a metaphor for Christ too so it kind of all came together in a way I could never plot like that <laughs> yeah well so. you know you were actually showing me the, the table of contents yeah and you were so explain to me again so if parents mm -hmm. are, are you know maybe their children are yeah. interested in writing right. tell me what about that how is okay. this going to help that that child the narrator Lainey is bullied she's a tough kid with a very tough home life and kind of a hillbilly so the kids are hard on her and she's tough as nails so she starts it out and the chapter is character and I'll just give you a sample she says this isn't about me the story I mean so already you got a reason to hang it up at least that's what mrs. Smith my teacher says and then I'll skip a little bit so anyway, she says you got to start a story with a character. When you start your story, and since I'm the first character you hear from in my story, that means it's me, Lainey Crafton, age 10, or nearly so, small for her age, but tough as a horseshoe, thanks to three big brothers and one bathroom. And then she goes down, but it's not about me, because once you get yourself a character for your story, now in this paragraph is almost everything you need to know about writing. Wow. I'm not kidding you. Because once you get yourself a character for your story, Mrs. Smith says, you give the character a problem. And the whole rest of the story is about that problem getting bigger and bigger and the character getting to be a better and better person. And then the character solves a problem and that's it. The end. I but love that. That is so well thought out. Isn't that fun? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so it progresses. So I moms, I mean, you're not only going to learn about this topic right here. Right. Um, but you are going to teach them the fun of writing. Oh, yeah. And I think that we get away from that art right. and that craft, and it's yeah. so important. So this really makes it a lot of fun. And then now you have this book, yeah. um, Wow, the Good News in Four Words. Okay, now you tell me how you can explain <laughs> the gospel in four words. I'm listening. Okay. So, and by the way, the illustration so on cute. this book okay. is so adorable. I want to say, I think it's really important that today we're living in a, in a time um, where these children are drawn by Nickelodeon and Disney and everything and video games and it's just moving and popping and colors are great. And so how do we hand our kids a book that will get their interest? And as soon as I saw this cover, I was like, I love this. I can't <laughs> wait to hear about it. So you got to tell me. See, you're very childlike. That's Let me tell you, thing. I am. My husband would say I'm you childlike should. too. So. <laughs> That's a great thing. But how do you do it in four words? <laughs> okay. They're four words, not just four words, but four words kids say all the time. Okay, I'll give you the outline. The first one is, wow, and that's creation and how everything was great in the Garden of Eden. And the next one is, uh-oh, <laughs> yeah, because that's <laughs> sin, right? And that we all sin and that we need the Savior. And then the next one is, yes because there is an answer because God gave us one and then gave his son and they crucified him but he rose from the dead and so we get our life from there and then it's ah because we have the assurance of faith and the fruit of the spirit and um, the promise of eternity and then we stuck in one more wow just because it's so great and we get to share it and God trusts us to do that so you want me to read just a tad? Would you do it, rhyme. please? So, <laughs> will do. You talked me right into it. All right. So the beginning's a note to parents, and it has a scriptural backup. But so this is the first wow. And when I read it to kids, and we're really hoping it catches on in churches because it's it's something you remember, you know. Okay. So wow. <laughs> if you were kids, I'd make you say it. I'll say it. Wow. Wow. There you go. <laughs> Back in the beginning, the world was still dark. No light and no lightning, not even a spark. No schools and no houses, no playgrounds or park. Then, wow. All God did was say, let there be light. He called the light day and the dark he called night. The world God created was perfect and bright. I'm skipping just a couple of the descriptions of that. And then God made people, a woman, a man, for Adam and Eve were both part of God's plan. They lived in the garden. That's where life began. Wow. And the next one is, uh, oh, right? Okay, now Adam and Eve had the world at their feet. The Garden of Eden held every tree and only one tree from which no one could eat. And that is explained also in rhyme. 
and then it's brought home to the kid. Oh, I, it, I gotta read you this because this part usually makes me cry. So Eve took a bite, uh-oh, Adam did too, and God saw it all. Children, what did you do? Since then, we all sin. That means me, that means you. We have to say, uh-oh, we're in a bad place. We can't earn God's favor or talk face to face. We're helpless and hopeless in need of God's grace. Wow, uh-oh. Mm. Can I go? I love that. More? Just, yes, because so, we got to get the happy ending. I uh, wish y'all could see the illustrations on so this. It is so <laughs> adorable. There you go. This is the yes. But God had a wonderful, masterful plan. I'll pay for their sin because only I can. I'll save the whole world by becoming a man. God loved us so much that he sent us his son. So Jesus was born and the plan was begun. His life was just perfect. No sin, no, not one. Yet, people grew jealous. Don't trust him, beware. They had him arrested. His trial was unfair. He died on a cross. He was crucified there. But that's not the end. Jesus rose from the dead. He came back to life again, just as he said, and gave us a promise of what lies ahead. So we get to yes and we accept Christ the truth and the way and our, then the next one is ah uh, uh. <laughs> our life is in Jesus our very best friend who will always be with us right up to the end for we have the spirit he promised to send and then a couple of other good pages about the ah uh, and the last one's the wow the fruit of the spirit that's in you will grow now love joy and patience are starting to show you walk with the savior wherever you go be thankful to Jesus. Let love overflow. Tell others God loves them. The world needs to know. And sharing this news helps our own faith to grow. I love this book. And I'll bet you got it memorized already. The wow. It is. Uh oh, it's yes. easy. Yeah. It's easy to understand. Oh, wow. And you know, if you're out there and you're watching today, maybe you're a mom and you're just wondering, you know, sometimes like, how do I get my children interested in the things of Christ? Mm -hmm. You know, I thank God that I had a mom and dad that uh, made church fun for me. They never had forced me to go. Um, we were very much like we would get little readings like this. Mm -hmm. We would have our, you know, our Sunday school lessons, and we enjoyed it. And, you know, like I said, if you're a mom out there and you're wondering, I really want my kids to be excited about the things of Christ. You know, God has really just called you and just given you, um, Dandy, a gift for this. Your illustrations are amazing. It's relevant. It's exciting. <laughs> and I just want you to do something. Could you pray for anybody sure. watching today? Maybe there is a mom out there and she's saying, I don't know how to get my kids um, excited about the things of God and just mm -hmm. to give them an encouraging prayer. Yeah. Oh, wow, Lord, you are the best. And we're thankful for the, the way you came down to be a man so that our sin could be taken care of and that you offer us that grace. And I pray you did it so you're the one who can reach hearts and it's not even up to us. So I pray that our children will love you and our grandchildren will know you and our neighbors would too and make us sensitive who to even give this book to who could change the family a whole family that doesn't know you so thanks for all the opportunities that you give us to share the faith wow amen amen <laughs> well you just heard it like it is this woman's unbelievable i am so humbled just to be sitting oh. here with you uh, somebody who's written this many books and make sure that you go out you can get where can they find you and learn more about you yeah almost everywhere <laughs> I would just say Google her name. It's probably going to come yeah. up everywhere. Anywhere but books are sold? Can, anywhere books are sold. Tyndale.com is a good place to go and see a lot of my books. And then Dandy with an I. Dandybooks.com is my website. And a lot of things pop up. But really, anywhere books are sold, you should be able to get get these. <laughs> so Well, it was such a great time. Thank you so much for joining us.